Hello, welcome back gamers and geeks to another episode of Gamer Culture. My name is Kuma and with us again today is our friend Matt. How are you, dude? Hey, what's up? I'm tired, but I always say that. Y'all can 100% <laughs> ignore that I'm wearing the same outfit as the last episode. Yeah, don't worry about that. That's just yeah. a coincidence. 100%. Mm -hmm. Complete coincidence. Totally not recording these literally 10 minutes apart. Not at all. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Not that at is all. It full is, fact. It is mm -mm. the future and it is raining. It is hot. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what the fuck it is. It's something, all right? I'm not paying attention to is the weather. Is it raining with you? It is. It is God, how fucking hot is it today? It was 100 something yesterday. I have, it was 100. It was 100 degrees like two days ago. And then we got rain last night. I don't understand what the hell's going on. Global warming is, <laughs> is real, y'all. Take care of the earth. Seriously. Take care of the it earth. It is 85 degrees and what's the humidity? 50% humidity. Well, that's because you're. No, okay, that's understandable. Yeah, that, I don't even know what the fuck going on over here. But anyway, it's fine. King Thank you. weird. Thank you for letting me come back again. Absolutely, dude. I love this. You are always welcome here. I love here. doing these episodes. Hell yeah. And today's going to be a fun, fun one because today we're talking about gaming hype. Hell uh, yeah. Good hype, bad hype, and just our feelings on hype in general, be it games, be it movies. Uh, Matt, why don't you start us off? What I, do you got? Start me off with, oh my God. with an example of bad hype. Get, oh, give me the bad hype. Which just doesn't help because I was just dancing for the hype <laughs> just a second ago. But still, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to bad hype, as much as I love video game hype, because video game hype is like a double-edged sword. You can you can either you're going to fuck up somebody or you're going to get fucked up. It's one or the other. <laughs> like it's one or the other when it comes to it. And sometimes video game hype does lead to like wonderful things and great stuff. But at the same time, it is just hype and it ends up really being disappointing. One perfect example was uh, Dog Stalkers hype. If you don't know what the game Stalk yeah. is, it's a it's a fighting game. If you know who Morgan Big Titty Vampire Bitch is, then you know what the fuck Dog Stalkers are. <laughs> if you don't know who Mar Morgan is, if, yes you do. Yeah, you fucking know who Morgan is. <laughs> and Dog Stalkers <laughs> is a series that they've been work that they've done in the past, and people have been begging for a newer Dog Stalkers like the longest time because they haven't done nothing since like Dog Stalkers three, I think, or two. I'm not sure which one. They it's haven't been done a while. shit. It's been a very long time, and you know that like. Um, they can do it because of the fact that other characters have shown up, like Morgan and Lilith have shown up mm -hmm. in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Morgan and Marvel vs. Right. Capcom 3 as well, too. Uh, I think yeah, the studio's the, not, not dead. Yeah, the studio's <laughs> not dead, and they can do stuff with it, because Capcom could easily, well, I'm not going to say easily, but they could do it. And at one point, in, I think it was during the E3, or it was like some kind of conference, maybe it was a C2E2, I'm not sure, they did mm -hmm. a little teaser that says, Dog Stalkers are not dead. And they just bought it up just in text and gave a hype on it. And it seemed like they were working on it. That was about seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Like the hype is still real, but they haven't done a single fucking thing with it. And they just teased us and just gave us a teaser, which made no sense. Like if they weren't going to move forward with it and they wouldn't have dragged it on this long. So obviously the hype was not called for at all and people are still begging for it as well too they are oh my god capcom if you somehow are watching this please give us our fucking dog stalker just give us something please don't tease us like last time <laughs> don't make us get hyped for no fucking reason no we need it's another the star dog citizen like, of fighting games like please give us something for the love of god that's all i ask but that was a <laughs> bad example of hype. like there are several other bad examples of hype as well too like the tekken x street oh god, fighter yeah. as well too tekken x street fighter was supposed to be in development from uh namco bandai as well and they they just announced that they're not going to this kind of dead in the water and that hype has been going on for like the last five six years like seriously fucking hell they really have been doing that and they still haven't done shit they gave us a disappointment so that was a fucking waste of a hype you know like and people once again yeah been begging for it as well too so like it's rough it's rough yeah oh it's rough you got any bad hypes? I'm sure I know you got bad hypes. I, I mean I know you got several I mean dude I, I got several too but while, I know you got it oh. While you were ta talking, another one came to mind, <laughs> uh, which I think trumps my original one. <laughs> uh, originally, I was going to mention, uh, for the MMO players out there, uh, all the lead up to Warlords of Draenor for World of Warcraft. Oh, yeah, I heard about um, that. If you ever watched any of the panels, just all the things that they said were going to be there, but didn't end it up, mm -hmm. did not end up in the final cut. Uh, but thinking about that made me remember an even more uh, egregious example of doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, a little known indie game called No Man's Sky. Oh, man. Oh, oh it hurts. Oh, <laughs> oh it hurts. Oh. Man. Okay. Oh, so, 
Oh. This is probably fresh on my mind because I just watched a video of it with my girlfriend who just bought bought the game. The game's mm-hmm. five years old. Yeah. Um, she just bought it. She loves it. Now. Uh, it's a great game. Now very playable. Does. Yeah, now. Because, <laughs> and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but they still made the fuck up, which is why I'm talking about it. Yeah. No Man's Sky, if you are a young baby child, young uh, baby child. is a game that came out five years ago that uh, was ousting itself as being this massive exploration sci-fi game that we're going to be, you were exploring the galaxy. It was galaxy was like literally billions of procedurally generated planets. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman that they had going around talking about the game was the lead developer. Lead lead developer was a young guy. He's like 30 something at the time. Uh, He was not a PR person. He was barely even a people person. If you look at his body language, he's very shy. He's very introverted. And he's going on all these big talk shows and news stations talking about this game that's got this huge hype that's doing this thing that's no one's ever done before to this scale, making a ton of promises. He's like, we're going to have big space combat. We're going to have pirates. You know, you're going to be able to meet people and meet up with your friends. And I mean, I, there are, there are reddits dedicated to the promises that were made and not kept. Yep. Um, because these were things that essentially amounted to things that they wanted to add or that they were trying to add or were planning on adding, but things that were never going to make it into the initial game or into the in- initial launch. Yeah. And the backlash on no man's sky when it first came out, like ignoring the technical problems. I realize the day and age we live in, it's just something we have to accept that games with new launches have te- technical issues. That's just how they are these days. Yeah. But the content that wasn't there was massive. Yeah. You couldn't meet up with your friends. There were no space pi- pirates that I, I, we could be here for an hour discussing everything that was not in the game that was in the game. And that is one of the mo- most egregious examples of bad hype. When you're sitting there making promises about what's going to be in your game months, months before mm-hmm. you're finished making the game. You don't have any idea what's going to be in that finished product until it is in the box, certified gold, and is being sent out for sale. Yep, man. So and again, I don't, I don't fully blame the guy because, I again, he wasn't a PR dude. But even as a lead developer, he should have known, don't be making the promises when you know you can't keep them. It's one of the biggest examples of bad bad hype. Because this game was going to be the the, this was going to be Atlantis for some people. This was going to be the holy grail of sci-fi exploration games. It was and it beautiful. It was beautiful and it was I remember the hype of that because of the fact that you can tra- traverse the universe infinitely. There's always something new. There's always something different. You can do so much interaction. And then when the game actually came out, so many people were disappointed. Like it was yeah. crushing. And like, I will, like you said, get benefit of the doubt. They did fix some stuff. It is an amazing game now, but yeah. for what it was and what the hype that was given behind it, it, just, it was rough. It was yeah. not worth it. At all, and I am surprised it did not kill the game, nor did it kill the momentum as well, too. I am surprised. They, man, full man. full credit to, but also, to the devs just, for that While game, you were thinking of that, I also thought game. of another one as well, too. Hey, have you, oh God. Hey, have you, have you ever heard of Hit a game me. called Yandere Simulator? Oh, my God. <laughs> have you ever heard of Markiplier? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's also a game by, uh, by a brand called um, uh, Omori? Omori. Omori, because it was... Mm-hmm. Uh, Developed by uh, Omocat, uh, the company brand okay. Omocat and everything. They, just like in Dairy Simulation, it took them fucking forever to make it. They've been talking about this since like 2013, 2014. <laughs> they only finished the game. They only finished the Omori game because of the fact the pandemic hit. So the person had to stay home, sit down, had nothing else to fucking do, and actually finally <sighs> finish the game. Because otherwise, Might this as well game would have been. Game. A, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and even now, like with Yandere Simulation, Yandere Simulation began development and hype since 2014, and people have been begging for this shit. They they said it would be done by 2019, which still took five years. And now it's yeah, like, so well, we'll be that was a lie. we'll we'll be done when we're done. And it's like, are you are you serious? Like, this, people have been hype about this game for so goddamn long, and the people keep just keep pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back and giving little teasers like, so, oh, here's a character, here's the color palette. Here's the uh, dialogue a little bit, but nothing with the you actual going, fucking I don't give game. a fuck. Like, give us the fucking game. Like, I personally don't give a <laughs> fuck about Yandere Simulation. I don't care. I, I, I don't. But I know a lot of people out there 
did care about that and they donated to the GoFundMe and the, uh, what was that other website that takes money? Kickstarter, there we go. And they take yep. Kickstarter and shit as well too and they still haven't done nothing nor refunded back anybody as well too for this game. That's bad. Yeah, That's it took bad. them fun. Now I think they may have done something only because of so much heat and it's been so long but during that whole time, <laughs> not a fucking thing. They just took all that money. Straight up took that, that money. Sucks. So, so much bad hype though but, but, there's some good hype though, right? Oh, there's always good, good hype out there. You know? And I, I think give me, come on, one give of the me games the that hype. I thought was, it up. I think one of the, the game that I'm like this, this was hyped to a very good degree. It's like, mm, yes, mwah. This, mm -hmm. this was some fine hype uh, because it was tempered. And I know you're going to hate me for being a, a Tyler clone, but Kingdom uh -huh. Hearts 2. Yeah, I fucking bet. I fucking bet. Just, <laughs> Can we go about the bad hype right. about Kingdom Hearts 3 real quick? Nah, you know what? Nah, we're not going to do that. No, we'll do that later. No, we'll do no, that later. That, that's in the bad, bad hype. That stays in its corner where it fucking belongs. <laughs> it knows what it did. It's going to face the corner until it's, it's sorry. No, Kingdom Hearts 2, I remember oh seeing ads God. for that game when cable was still a thing and you had ads on cable. Mm -hmm. um, when I was still a t tender little uh, 11, 12-year-old junior high student. Um, oh, and that was the it's the first and only time I would say I've genuinely gotten involved in a like a fandom deep dive. Like yeah. not just being like, oh, yeah, I watched some videos on YouTube about that. I'm in the fandom. No, like discussion boards. That was that was my time it was Kingdom Hearts 2. It they didn't oversell. Yeah, there wasn't, you know, these massive blowouts of you know, special editions, get a Sora statue. And I think it's because it was only the second game at that point. Yeah. Uh, we'd had, we'd had chain of memories, but that was like a weird spin off. That like, Oh, that's, that's cool. They're doing a little story spin off, giving us something extra mm -hmm. going into two. Okay. Um, but it was just the right amount of excitement. You would get these, these little te teasers of like, okay, here's a trailer. Here's another trailer. Here's, yeah. Some scenes from a game. We're not going to tell you what the scenes are. We're not going to tell you who they are. They spoon fed and I, I, just enough to keep people kind of, kind of salivating for it. Yeah. But they, they did. didn't oversell it. They didn't overhype it. It wasn't this big phenomenon. They didn't, you know, try to sell you three a three hundred dollar package for a sixty dollar game. Yeah. Um. And to this day, I'm like, I still remember fondly that whole ad campaign because I was excited for the game. I felt like I had a generally good idea of what I was getting. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, blown out of my mind by what I was seeing, but I was excited. Um, and to this day, it's it's still a very positive memory for me, being like, yeah, I'm I'm about about this. I am excited for this game. Mm -hmm. And I, man, I don't blame you <laughs> for Kingdom Hearts too. Okay, I get it. Like that is a pinnacle. That is the pinnacle of like hype and like quality. You know what I mean? Because it paid off. It paid mm -hmm. off really fucking well. At the yes. end of it, you know, and at the Big end of the thing, day, it paid off. at the end of the day, as long as the hype pays off and it was worth it, then then was a good hype, you know, yeah. like there are still some hypes that are kind of up in the air until the game gets released. Mm. But until which it does, is smart. Yeah, which it, it is smart. And it's exhaust. It's fucking exhausting. But it is hype. <laughs> like for me, one of the games that I'm hype about is a uh, bomb rush cyberpunk. I love that man, you look. It, people, I don't know that Pokemon. So no, you don't know that. Speaking of Pokemon, we'll talk about that in a moment. But speaking of uh, <laughs> bomb, bomb rush cyberpunk, people know, and if you've seen any of our episodes, that y'all know I have a very strong, passionate feel about Jet Set Radio. I love the game. I love the music. I love everything. Uh, bomb rush cyberpunk is uh, basically the um, what's the best way I can describe it? It is the the inherited version of Jet Set because once again okay. Sega, you fucking up and not giving us Jet Set. But um <laughs> Bomb Rush Cyberpunk basically was inspired by Jet Set Radio. They even got the person okay. uh Hideki Naganuma who composed all mm -hmm. the music for like Jet Set and everything to work on this game as well too. It is basically the pinnacle inherited child of Jet Set Radio. And if you see the graphics, you see the gameplay. They just released uh, uh, a minute gameplay about like a week or two ago and this is a small um 
like indie studio that's doing it as well too. Uh, Team Reptile, I think it's Team Reptile. Okay. Yeah, I think it's Team Reptile. Um, they're doing this, and they're not like well known or popular and everything, but they're basically making another jet set radio for us because of the fact that Sega's like, nah, we don't want to touch it. And these people were like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck you. We'll make our own jet set radio with blackjack and hookers and shit. And that's what they're fucking doing. <laughs> so I don't get hyped for games that much because I ain't got time for that shit. But this game, this is the only game I care about coming out. And even though the game still has not become, is not out yet and it's going to be released in 2022, hopefully, it, mm-hmm. the hype behind it is so goddamn real because the fandom of Jet Set Radio and uh, any games like that have been, like, begging. They People have been begging for this shit since Jet Set Radio Future, which came out, what, 2012? No, way before that, like 2007 or eight, I believe. Was it 10? Oh, wow. I think it was like 7 or 8 because it came out when the original Xbox... It came out when the original Xbox came out. Actually, it may have been further back, like 2005, 2006, actually, now that I think about it. You know? So... Original Xbox, because that was... God, so that was Halo Combat Evolved. Yeah. That was at least 2003? Yeah, that was like 2003, I think, 2003, 2004. And Jet Set Radio Future, which was the second Jet Set game, came out with that, with the Xbox. It was one of the actual original games that came with the Xbox. So, right. from 2004... To fucking now, people have been begging for this. And now that uh, Bomb, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is now in development because they gave us a teaser, it it, mm. it blew people's fucking mind because it was like, all right. Like, it, this is what we wanted. This is literally what we want. I think original some some original developers who worked on the original Jet Set are also working on this game as well too. So it explains why you get the same feel, gameplay, and all that stuff. The composer also worked on this as well too, giving it the same feel and composure, but it's just brand new. It's a spiritual successor. There we go. I was trying to find the right word. This game is a spiritual successor of Jet Set Radio, and the hype behind it is so fucking real. I honestly recommend you or anybody else, please look at the goddamn trailer after (laughs) <laughs> oh my god, it's so goddamn good. There's like four trailers. But, I'm gonna cue that up. But man, it's oh god, it's so goddamn good. Oh, and you and when you watch it, you'll understand why I'm talking about how hype it is. You know, like it's so fucking good, and I'm so excited for it as well too. You know, like I, I currently don't, have that sitting on my YouTube page, ready to go. Dude, as soon as we're done. dude, oh my god, oh, it's it looks so fucking good because and they I just dropped the shit like that because of the fact that it takes a lot for me to be into a game. More like more or less the game not even fucking out yet, and I'm so yeah. excited for it. Like the last time I got this excited is when like Pokemon uh Silver and Gold came out. Cause I don't know if you mm. remember, remember, mm. remember all the rumors when you like got I the was new grade, man. Yeah. I remember. Mm-hmm. Remember, remember Pika Blue. Remember that? Remember Pika Blue? Hell yeah, I remember Pika Blue. <laughs> that was the best. Fuck yeah, Pika Blue. When you saw a picture and you find out it was a Meryl. but when you saw the picture, you're like, yeah. oh my god, it's some kind of weird. <laughs> Pikachu that's like evolved into a future thing as well too and people were so good the hype yeah. of that alone for the rest of the Pokemon series from fucking gold and silver that that hype alone is how I feel about uh, Bomb Rush Cyberpunk like I got that same feel when I was that excited to find out what kind of theories or what kind of story is going to be what is the game about what is the gameplay what new Pokemon we're going to be introduced to I, that's the kind of hype I love Pokemon and Bomb Rush Cyberpunk that's the best hype Best, best hype. Oh, God. And, and that right blue. there is... Pick a blue. <laughs> I, yeah, I remember that shit. For those of you who weren't born when that game came out, um, oh. you know, when we were young, we and there was no... You know, the internet existed, but not, not you know, really. as in-depth yeah. as it does today. Yeah. I used it to print out cheat codes, and that was about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you would see pictures of like, you know, cause Pokemon had already been released in Japan yeah, and it was always, you know, it's always, you know, ahead of what we have here. We were seeing pictures of the Pokemon Meryl, which we didn't understand at the time was not a Pikachu. Mm-hmm. We didn't, you know, so everyone was like, Oh, it's like this cute little mouse with like a weird tail. Everyone called it Pika blue. Cause mm-hmm. we didn't understand that was not a Pikachu evolution. Yep. It was a completely separate Pokemon. Yep. And obviously when we, when the game came out, we realized, Oh, it's a separate beast. Um, but, uh, Still yeah, good, that, high. uh, Ugh. that, that's, that was the nature of Pokemon at the time. It was the dark ages of the Pokemon fandom. It was, it was um, so worth it though. Like, oh, good hype. Oh, it was I miss oh, it. my heart for oh. the original days. Um, yeah. uh. so g- getting into, cause we're coming up near the end of the episode, mm-hmm. but to get to, uh, 
just hype in gen- general. I think hype is an excellent tool that quickly can get out of hand. It's kind of like a double edged you know, sword. You know, I'm right. It is. It's <laughs> very much a double edged sword. It's yeah. you know, you're 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 lost in the woods and you light a fire and you've got to keep it under control because it can vary. It's it's a good source of warmth. It's good to have. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's important. But you can very easily let it get out of control, and that's when it causes damage. Yep. When you start promising a product that is not, it, it's not what the final product is. Hype is, you know, not necessarily a bad thing, but I, I think a lot of the blame, and I'll be the shitter that says it, I think a lot of the blame lies more in the fandom when it comes Hell to hype yeah. than it does in whoever's producing the media. Mm-hmm. Because all they're doing is producing things to get people excited. That's what you do. Yep. The problem is people take hype as prom promises they take it as fact they take it as gospel yep you don't do that they're going to show you the best scenes in the movie they're going to show you some of the funniest scenes of a movie they're going to show you some of the most exciting parts of a game um they're going to pre-render stuff in a game it's the consumer's job to understand that they're being shown something that's polished for them to see as long as you go in with low expectations for the hype you you'll get what you want either you're going to be it's either two things either you'll be not like sad because you went in with low expectations or you're going to be overly fucking hyped because they provided you quality shit that you've been wanting and that you did not expect. And that's why I love it. You went it. in there. Yeah. Reasonable expectations. Is I think what it all boils down to in hype. Yeah. You know, love, love the hype. Enjoy what they're showing you, but going, going with reasonable expectations. Yeah. Reasonable expectations that aren't too much and that you can't get mad at the developers because the game has not been finished. Everything hasn't been developed and things have to be changed. That's just, that's the business. That's the industry. And people have to so accept we live that. In now. Yep. This is how we live yeah. though. But hype all we good though. Hype always is, is something. We it's, enjoy. Fun. it's fun. I'll say it. Hype's always fun. So much goddamn fun. Ah, oh, I love it. Mm. Hell yeah. Man. Alrighty. Well, so that was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you very much for talking about hype, Matt. That nah, was, thank you for letting I, me on. This. I was, was hyped going into the, into this episode. Yes, I knew the, these were going to be same. some fun ones. This was a good one. And I would make it longer, but like we got shit to do today, so we can't. Like not now. We do later. N- another episode. Absolutely. Hype part two. All right. Another one. We'll, yeah. We'll have you back. We'll talk more. Appreciate it. Alrighty. So thank Matt, you. who are you, and what can they find? Where can they find you? What do you do? Uh, I am Matthew. I am one half owner of Nerdy Bitch. You see that logo behind me? That's my business. If you want to Google us, you literally can Google us. Our Instagram, our Facebook, our website, everything on it. We make anime street brand clothing as well as 8-bit perler and accessories. Right next to the logo, you see that little thing full of clothes and shit? That pink thing? Yeah, that's just all inventory because we make t-shirts. We make hats. We make different. I'm sure you've seen Tyler, uh, a part of GGG with his GGG hat. Yeah, I made that for him and everything. Um, we make stickers as well too. We do a lot of stuff. Just started making keychains, which is my favorite one. Cause you see this ugly girl on the back of it. It says "ugly but trying." Yeah, that's my shit, though. Yeah, buddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Thank you. Hell yeah. But still, we just do different clothing as well too. And we're getting back into the con scene, but at the same time, you know, wear your mask, stay safe. We're not like that. We're rushing to the pandemic, but hey, you know, Google absolutely. Buy my shit. I'm broke. Buy my shit. I'm broke. Do me that favor. Besides, look, besides buy checking out his shit. Besides checking out the trailer to Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Go, go buy my shit. Okay? www.nerdybit.co. <laughs> but go there, buy my shit, but then go check out the trailer. Please. Please, please, please. It, yeah, check, check out the stuff, guys. It's it's really cool. It's got a lot of awesome stuff. I keep meaning to put it in order for a gamer co- Dude, culture ad. I, I got you. <laughs> look, I got you, man. I'm telling you. Just tell me the color scheme, which I already know the color scheme, because I'm part of like three episodes of Gamer Culture, so I already know what to do. Uh, I just need address, which you definitely ain't gonna tell me on screen right now, and we'll talk about that after, okay? So I'll I got save you that for after. I got you. I got you. No, his stuff is awesome, guys. Check check him out. He does a lot of great stuff. <laughs> Want to see more of gamer culture? Go ahead and check out more of our videos right here on YouTube, or go check out gamerculture.com or the grandgeekgathering.com, where we have a huge backlog of podcasts, various episodes, and let's plays as well. Yep, yep. Uh, you can check out more of the Grand Geek Gatherings offering, offerings here on YouTube or on the grandgeekgathering.com as well. A massive log of very uh, varied content, including stuff on uh, like indie comics for comics uh, or most extreme ranking challenge, which you should definitely go check oh out. God. Probably one of the best. The best so things goddamn funny. Right Matt's uh, been on it. Oh my god, I'm part of the shit. The Lord of the Rings episode. Oh man, that was so fucking funny. Oh my god, that was good. Oh my I god, loved it. it was so funny. Once again, I do thank you for letting me be on. This has been real fun. I do love doing these. Hundred percent. 
Dude, I love having you here. Oh, Everyone else, thank you very much for watching today. Stay cultured and GGG. GGG.